So now on the PC, if you want to connect the Catalyst to software uh, that's running on the PC, you need an application, something like Loop B1. Now, if you go to uh, Loop B1 on, on your browser, and you'll see here Loop B1 virtual free, please read about how it works. And then you download it here, go all the way down and download it here. And once you do that, the next time you open up the Catalyst, you will notice that when you go to the default session and you go to MIDI select, you have a choice of using uh, Loopy one or um, a MIDI mate or any other synth that you happen to have running on your machine. So a typical situation, and I'll show you why that just shut off. Okay. When you get loop B1, it's very important that you also, you get this program that says, um, right here, the monitor. And when you click on that monitor, you get this because it does not like to see an in and out. So if I put loop B1 here and I put loop B1 here, it gets into a loop, this thing goes on, everything shuts down. So I keep this open sometimes when I'm messing around here. So if I see the check mark, I know I have to uncheck it. I put a MIDI interface on the back of uh, this laptop so that you see now there's choices for the input. So the MIDI made, for example, is what I would plug from my Malacat or Drumcat. I plug that in to the MIDI mate and the MIDI mate plugs into the computer. And once you install uh, loop V1, you have the ability to route the input coming from the MIDI mate directly out to any of these. So if I have it set to, to uh, MIDI mate two, that means that anything I play on the map is gonna go back out to the outside world. Like if I had a synthesizer, like the gig cat that you have, or, um, you know, the, X, uh, the Motif XS. If I want to be using a synthesizer, I would set these all to loop B1. So that's how that would work. And remember, when you do any of these things, you should um, go here and save. So by saving a default, you're just saving the default, but you can save, do a save as, and you can name it anything you want. And once you have a save as, you notice that there's a browser here. And here you would just find a session. Here's a kit. Kit goes in the session. You go here, and it drops in. And now that is how we're ready to start going with that. So if we're going to hear some sounds, we have to connect that loopy one to a synth. So if I install a synth, we here we have contact going, and I want all the notes coming from the catalyst to go into here. And you notice these are th different channels, 6, 11, 16. These are, this is a rack of sounds coming from the native instruments in the uh, discovery series. This is the India library. But what you have to do, and it doesn't matter what program you're using on the Mac or the PC, you're going to have to go to this screen here and go to your options. And this program is going to get its input. In this case, it needs it from loop B1. And also, I have the ability to turn on or off the MIDI mate, which is my interface. So in this situation, these the synthesizer, these sounds, will get MIDI from either the MIDI mate or from the loop B1. But in this case, we're only going to be using the um, loop B1 because all the information is coming directly from the catalyzer, the catalyst. So that is how you connect from the catalyst to a soft synth. 
and I might as well, since we're on that subject, I'll show you another example. If a lot of folks are using Ableton Live. So when you open up Ableton Live, it also has a folder called Preferences. And it gets a little bit more involved. So here's your MIDI. And in the MIDI, you set the loopy one for track, sync, and remote. You can also set the MIDI mate, and you can set the output as well. So it has its own little router, just like we have our little router here. It's the same kind of thing. But every program will have that. And um, if you have an audio card, the audio card would be set here. But since we don't have an audio card in this case, we're using the built-in uh, computer audio card, which is terrible if uh, because of the latency issues. Uh, <laughs> see what I mean? 92 milliseconds. You can certainly do a lot better with that if you uh, install an ASIO driver. Look at the difference. So if you do not have... Um, an audio card, except for the one built in the machine. Make sure you download ASIO for all. And then when you open up your audio device, you, you will set it to that and the latency goes down. Incredible. Watch again. Look at these crazy numbers. You couldn't play with that. And now look what ASIO does. And this is the same for the Mac, only it's called Core Audio. So finally, I'm going to show you, get back to contact. Contact has the same thing. You'd go here, options, go to the audio, and here's your, here's your chance to use the ASIO for all. 